Well, um, thanks for coming to this talk. Um, I am really pleased to be here, and it's my great honor to be the Director of Elections for the City and County of Denver and Colorado. Um, it, I think I might be the only local election administrator actually attending the conference and certainly speaking, but we are a critical um, mass of folks around the country. There's over 8,000 local election offices that administer elections in addition to the 50 secretaries of state or state offices that also are involved. So massive large group of people that need to be part of these reform discussions certainly going forward. Um, but it is my honor to serve the citizens of Denver. I've done so for seven years and I've been in election administration for 13 years. Uh, I came to it differently than what normal election officials normally come to it at. Um, and I actually worked for a nonpartisan civic engagement group that worked on college campuses in 2004, namely the New Voters Project. So I have completely approached elections differently. For me, it's about making the voter the center of the process, and that's what we've tried to do in Denver, and we've been able to innovate across the board, advocate for policy changes, really change the way that we centralize and focus on the voter instead of um, sort of setting up barriers and rules to, to do that. So today I want to talk about how, what we've done in Denver, but then also how that relates to the rest of the country. Um, what I have found in Denver and as I've traveled around the country and talked to folks is that election administration, the policies, the regulations, the rules around uh, the process are really what creates a lot of the issues that then fil infiltrate into the rest of the political spectrum. Um, and I like to describe this as games being played with the election process. Um, electionopoly, as I've, as I've termed it up here, but across the board, and I know during this conference there's been a lot of talk of, of campaign finance reform and what that looks like. I've got a gerrymandered boardwalk up here to, to symbolize uh, the games that get played with redistricting, um, all of that, but even down to the local level and in election administration, there are a ton of games being played, and there is a lot of leeway that we actually have at the local level to impact these, these decisions whether it be decisions about where vote centers get located, how many vote centers are offered for early voting, where the polling places get located, um, what kind of outreach the elections office do. All of these things are, are control that local election offices have, and they very much impact your, your experience as a voter. Um, the other piece, and this is, this is one of the biggest things that I think when we talk about reform, we really need to talk about voter registration and what that looks like. Because if you're not registered to vote, it's going to be really hard for you to actually cast a ballot in the election. And being from Colorado, we're the, we were the fourth highest turnout state in 2016. And when you look at the six top states for turnout, all of them have same day registration. And the bottom five states across the country have very restrictive voting reg registration deadlines, um, precincting requirements, all of that. And so it absolutely impacts people's ability to participate, people's ability to vote, and how they engage with their government. Um, so I would suggest that I think voter registration, consistency around that is all very much key to changing this, this process that we have in front of us. Um, and making sure that the voting experience is free from partisan politics. Because I can guarantee you, I'm an unaffiliated elector and I'm, and I'm running an elections office, but when you look across the country, if you look at the secretaries of state that run the state offices, if you look at local election offices that are run by elected, elected folks, it's either a Democrat or a Republican, mostly in those places, and there is a ton of partisan games happening with all of these rules. And so I think it's important that we really look to people that are going to approach this in a nonpartisan way, make appropriate reforms so that we can fix some of the games that get played with the election process. Um, so for call to action, there's a couple things. First, as a voter, have high expectations. And you should expect a meaningful, accessible, fair process when you go to vote and when you participate. And if you're not getting that, you should, you should call out your local election official or your state official on those things and really, really pay attention to what they're doing to impact your voting experience. Elected officials seem to forget that once they get elected, they, they now represent the entire jurisdiction and not just the people that voted for them and not just the people that gave them a check during their uh, campaign. 
Um, one of the strongest things that we've done in Colorado, we, we have a ballot delivery system. We send you a ballot before every election if you're a registered voter. We update your record if you move um, through the post office or any other method. We have same day registration. We have vote centers if you want to vote in person. We have 24-hour boxes. We have mobile voting centers. We send out teams of election judges to group residential facilities and nursing homes and even the county jail if they're eligible and they're awaiting trial. We do all of this because we actually care about what the voting experience looks like. And your elected officials need to remember that they represent all people, not just the ones that, that voted for, for them. And so when advocating for policy changes in the election world, it is extremely difficult to go convince state legislators that they need to change the process when they just got elected through that process, right? So advocate for change, push for change, and, and remind them that they represent everybody. And then um, election officials themselves. So um, I just mentioned there's 8,000 local election offices. If you haven't been an election judge or you haven't gone in and toured your election process or you don't know who your person is that runs the election, I would suggest that you start at finding out the answers to those questions. We love when new people come in and work in the process with us. We give tours, we give media tours, we periscope our election processes online so people can see them. And the reason we do that is we want feedback. We want you as the voters to tell us uh, what you want in your voting process. In Denver, we have, we have responded to those, um, uh, that feedback from voters. We look at your call, the reasons why you call us. We've built tools like Ballot Trace, like eSign, both of which are first in the nation innovations in elections that have made the process better. Um, and, so, and finally, I would also, some key questions to consider when you look at what happens in your state. Um, what does the voting process look like? What options do you have as voters? Um, what does the registration process look like? Do you have same-day registration? A lot of the discussion these days is about automatic registration, which is great. I think that that is just a modern way of saying NVRA done correctly. Um, but automatic registration has brought great things forward, but it still is not same-day registration. And same-day registration requires extra technology. It requires a vote center type model. So I would advocate that kind of going a step further and ensuring that you can actually register and vote on election day. Um, what does the ballot access process look like? The, former, the prior speaker talked about the primary process and how flawed it is with regards to unaffiliated voters and independent voters. And we really need to fix these processes if we want to have an impact on, on the partisan divide. Um, and then what overall are your, vote, are your laws around voting voter-centric? Do they actually respect the voter and respect the voting process? And I would suggest that across this country right now, there's probably only five or six states that are doing it well. Colorado is one of them. California has adopted Colorado's model, and they're going to start rolling that out this year, which is great. I've been working with various states to share what our experience has been, um, but I think it's important to continue to advocate for these things as we go forward. Um, so my uh, contact info information is up here. I would suggest, encourage you to reach out to me. I get calls and emails and, and texts and Twitter messages from people around the country all the time, and I've enjoyed being able to share what Colorado's done in, in making the process better. Um, and I will, I'll leave you with one piece. Um, the voting process and what it looks like today is going to be very different in the future. And so we need to be talking about not only what works for today and what responds to the challenges of today, but also what does it look like in the future. And I, have, I brought my daughter with me today. She's seven. She's right down here. And whatever I can't get done in my career and in my lifetime, she'll carry it on. So um, thank you. Um, Thank you for having me, and certainly reach out as you have questions. Thanks.